Well, here on the channel, we go to a lot of effort to find where charges are to be installed. And then we try to film the progress from the start right up until when they're switched on and working. But recently, there have been a whole pile of charges being installed that are still sitting there three months later, not connected, not working. I'm Dave. Welcome to Dave Takes It On. It's not good enough, and I'm going to get to the bottom of this and find out who is holding up these installations. Here is my progress to date. Well, I first arrived at the Tesla supercharger at Birch Services on the M62 eastbound way back in October 2023 and followed that up with a filming visit in December. The chargers had already been there for some considerable time as they were the older V3 chargers, which are now redundant following the launch of the V4 chargers in August last year. So this installation predates that time. Well, on arrival in October, electrical engineers were working on the cabling and they stopped to have a chat. Well, the substation was already installed, but not connected, along with the transformer and the individual chargers. They were in the process of preparing the cabling that went from the switchgear cabinets to each individual charger, and they hoped it would be up and running by Christmas. So we returned in December, eager to film them in action. No such luck. Nothing appeared to have been done since our last visit two months previously. Nobody was working, and no progress had been made that we could see. Clearly, they would not be opening for Christmas. But we did notice a huge amount of activity across the car park at the site of the new grid serve installation, so we headed over there. Well, we did a bit of filming, and then we found one of the senior engineers who was fully clued in as to what was happening. And when... And he was pleased to talk to us, just not on camera, so we respect that. He told us they were shutting down the site for the Christmas period and opening up the car park. It had been fenced off. It was planned to return to work in January to resume, and he anticipated it would be opening around Easter 2024. That's later this month. In the meantime, we went back to Leyland and we filmed three new installations. Well, January was a miserable wet and cold and windy month, so it was not until mid-February that I managed to get back to Birch Services to film the progress. I first went over to the Tesla V3 chargers and once again found absolutely no action, no progress. But over in the GridServe site it was all go, a veritable hive of activity. A retaining wall had been built together with the concrete bases for the individual chargers and another base for the switchgear cabinets. While filming, we met up with the same engineer we'd last seen in December, and once again, not on camera, he stopped to talk to us and take us through the progress. And yeah, there was actually plenty of progress. Now, I'm not going to bore you with all the details, but it seems that January was a washout for them and very little had been done. But now that the weather was picking up, it was a lot kinder, they were cracking on. He also explained that a lot had changed, although he was still not sure of the route for the main cable that was to power the site. The supply was installed on the opposite side of the motorway, in the westbound services, and a huge ducting had been installed underneath the motorway for them to pull the cable through. Now this cable, by the way, it's about as thick as your arm, so it's not something you can do by hand. They were going to employ winches and steel cables. Anyway, that pull through had not yet been carried out, but they had, in the meantime, been given the go-ahead from Tesla on the westbound side to take over their installation, because they also were having problems over there. And it would make sense, he said, to keep one group or gang or company or, or person in charge of the whole lot. So yeah, a lot had been achieved. He walked us through the progress, and he believed that they were about two weeks behind schedule, that's all. Opening now was planned for the middle to end of April. Now I asked him specifically about the DNO, he said no, the problem is not the DNO. Apparently they are sat there waiting for the go-ahead from these installers to get all the cabinets, chargers and groundwork completed. He said he was not aware of any delay once they had completed their works, and believed that the DNO was just waiting for their go-ahead. 
He explained they cannot call the DNO in until the groundwork had been completed and all the units, the cabinets, the chargers and everything were all in place because that is what the DNO will do the connection with. He was confident that the DNO would not let them down on this one. The delay here had been the weather. Well, the final route for the cable uh, from the other side had not been finalised, but the services had been connected to a new supply in the meantime. They'd shut down late one night and switched the supply over, so that was now on an independent circuit away from the chargers. He was totally confident, so I plan another trip back there soon. He seems to know exactly what he's talking about and what's going on, so I'm going to be back there a couple of times before uh, it's opened up and see how progress is going. So, having left there, the next stop was in Leyland, where there are three installations in progress that we wanted to film, and initially we did this back in December. There's a 15-bay Tesla supercharger at uh, Walton Summit. There's an EV point with 380 kilowatt dual-bay chargers, six-bay installation, uh, at EJ Services at Matrix Park, and an Osprey, uh, with four 65 kilowatt chargers at the Bobbin Mill. When we got there, no work was in progress at any of these locations. In all cases, the chargers were installed, but fenced off and not off for operational. So now it's early March, it's time once again to catch up on progress, but there's been none. Well, no, that's not quite true. At Matrix Park, the chargers which had been covered with a canopy but were actually full of holes, and the flood, they'd both gone. This installation seems to be going backwards. Well, just a few yards away is the Bobbin Mill. It's a local restaurant a mile ago there regularly. A quick trip there revealed a similar story. No noticeable change on the Osprey installations. So there are four Osprey chargers here, 65 kilowatts. So I went inside to ask. And here I found that only the day before I missed them, engineers had been on site and they had the covers off the Osprey chargers. They were back on now and are still not working. They also reported that the engineers had attended the matrix and removed the canopies from the EV point chargers over there. But not connected. Now, everyone in uh, the Bobby Mill seemed to believe that they were actually connected to the grid but they had no official confirmation of that. Well, it's now three months where the chargers are installed and not yet working, so I'm now hunting down who is to blame. First thoughts are always the DNO, but one thing I don't do is prejudge. I have made contact by phone and email with those concerned, but have nothing more to add at this stage. I will keep chasing, and I will find out who is holding back these particular chargers, because they're not the only ones. Being on my doorstep, these are much easier to chase up. Well, thanks very much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please click the like button. And if you would, please subscribe. It makes such a difference to us as a new channel. If you click the bell icon, the notification, you'll be notified the next time we launch a video. And a massive, massive, massive thank you, last but not least, to our Patreon members. This side of the business is growing dramatically. We've had our most successful month ever. And thank you so much for your support for the channel. I'm Dave.